Have you ever heard of co-living before? What is it? Why is it so special? Why are people doing it in the real estate market as a owner and as a tenant? I wanna be able to break down all those advantages for you today, so stay tuned. My name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design, and today's video is three co-living advantages for tenants and owners. All right, so I wanna be able to share with you the advantages, the top three advantages of co-living as a tenant and as an owner. And the reason why I can talk about this is because I've done both sides. I've been part of it pretty much. And so I wanna be able to share with you my experience. And yes, if you look at one side of the coin, you're gonna say, you know what? There's more advantages on this side than at that side. And if you look on the other side of the lens of it, you're gonna say, hey, this is a better deal than over there. And so I wanna break that down for you. So let's jump in. So we're gonna start off with the top three advantages as a tenant. And so we're gonna dive right in. So the first one is co-living is affordable. Now, there was a study done for people under 30, the millennials are spending 45% of their income on an apartment. Now, we're not talking about buying kitchen supplies, all the utilities, we're not talking about furnishing it, right? There's an, a bigger expense that comes with doing a, having your own apartment, right? And so co-living is actually more affordable when you are a tenant than you would being able to go out and get your own studio apartment. So yeah, you're not having to pay all these fees to apartment complexes, the security deposits, all of that. You're actually paying a lower rent than you would for in a studio apartment out in town and you're including utilities in that person's rent. So for example, out in the Boise, Idaho area, you cannot get a studio apartment, especially close to downtown or minutes in a good area that wants to have all the amenities. You can't find a studio apartment for $1,000 or less. That's surely, it's more than $1,000. Then you tackle on internet, you tackle on fees, you tackle on furnishing it, all of that, security deposit, and you're talking about over on average, over thirteen to $1,500 a month. In our co-living, what we're doing is we're having that even for less than $900, which include utilities, and you don't have to furnish it, which is absolutely awesome. So as a tenant, I remember when I lived in San Diego, I lived with six other people, and so I ran the house, but guess what? The house we're gonna talk about is was in my name. So we're gonna stay tuned to why that is actually a problem and why co-living kind of breaks that down and takes off the liability from you. So that's number one. Number two is a built-in community or culture. I love this because when I lived with those six other people, what was cool is I was never lonely, right? And if I wanted my own you know, space, I could just go to my room. And so there was a study done in 2019 that said 30% of millennials often feel alone or always feel alone. And so what's great about co-living is it actually gives you a community and a culture to be a part of. People could do movie nights, dinners together. They can be able to talk about each other's day. They can build new friendships that they normally wouldn't out in town or at their job. And so the co-living community is so powerful because you get to really build a culture, a family with people. Now, as an owner of a co-living property, our intention is to get like-minded people. And for us, we're doing young professionals. And so people who are working, they're not freshmen in college, I wanna party all the time. And there's rules and regulations around that. But you're actually getting people who are in the same age range, roughly, that are on the same path, aiming towards the same direction. They're busy workers at their company and they just wanna have a great place to lay their head, not have to spend an arm and a leg, but also make friends and have people that they can hang out with. And so I find that to be a huge one. Number three, as a tenant, it eliminates the financial liability of the tenant, all right, of a room, whoever's running the house. So here's what happened. Back in, man, 2000. 10, I think it was. I rented a house in San Diego and my name was on the lease and I filled it with roommates. And that was awesome because my rent started to go do 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 do, right? It was awesome. My, I paid less than what it was. The problem was if someone left, that rent was coming out of my pocket if we didn't fill it. Or if we had to prorate it, that difference came out of my pocket because I was responsible for it. As a tenant in a co-living property, why it's so awesome is that if someone leaves, it's on the owner, not the person in the room. 
And that's one thing I, I absolutely love around that. Um, so it's more of a room lease versus a group lease, right? And so just because you're leasing a room doesn't mean you're responsible for the entire group. I had the responsibility of the entire group and that I will tell you was just a nightmare. So you don't have to have that financial anxiety if someone's gonna leave or something like that. The other thing is utilities. I would have to every month ask for you, all my roommates for utilities and if they were some, they didn't have the money, they blew the money, they were just being a jerk, you know? It's like, I was on the hook for it. And I had to wait and pry, hey, do you got the utility money, you got rent, like nightmare. As a co-living tenant, you don't have to worry about that. It's all on the owner and on their shoulders. Now, there's so many other advantages of being a tenant, but those are the top three that I love. Now what I wanna do is I wanna to talk to you as an investor. If you're on your path to financial freedom, I really believe co-living is one of the greatest ways to achieve financial freedom quickly. It's not the only strategy, but in this market today with where we are, with prices the way they are, I think this is the best way to do it or one of the best ways. And you're providing affordable housing for people to have an amazing culture. You're taking the financial liability and anxiety off of them. There's just so many reasons why co living's just a win-win for everyone. So let's jump into the three advantages as a owner of doing co-living. Number one is you have a low entry fee. So what we're doing is we're taking a single family home and we are now going to turn that into a multi-family, okay? I like to say co-living for owners is a single family home with multi-family investments, right? Metaphorically, I guess we could say. But here's the thing, is you only have to put down your 20%. Now, if you went and bought a multi-family, you're gonna have the, you're probably gonna pay a bigger price, especially if it's five or more units. You're gonna pay a higher price because it's based on NOI and not comps in the area. So your 20% is a lower entry fee than like a five unit or more, and that's going to be a huge advantage. Now, yes, do you have to pay for maybe an additional bathroom? Do you have to pay for putting up some walls? Do you have to pay for maybe some new paint or something like that? Yeah, we had to put in close to we were we underwrote it for about sixty thousand with furnishing. We were about seventy thousand all in on our co-living property, but it's a much lower entry fee than a property that we're going to buy five units or more, right? To get some really good returns. Now. You might sit there and say, well, Joe, I don't have 20%. Well, maybe you already own your home and it's a great fit for co-living. You can put up a couple walls. You might be able to add a bathroom. Maybe you already have a great setup and you can just add a bedroom, put up some walls, drywall, paint, and you're done. And you can charge a little bit more. Now, I remember back in the day, I went to a real estate meetup group. This guy was talking about how he did this around colleges and they were crushing it. They had an entire system. What I loved about it was great returns. What I didn't like about it was college kids destroy things. They party, they're immature, they're not, they're just young, right? They're learning, they're following and chasing whatever comes at them. What we're doing with young professionals, we're saying we want the people who've already passed that phase. They have career, they have income coming in, they have a path that they're walking down. They're just in a season where they're not married, they're, you know, they could be dating, but we don't allow couples in our place, so that's great. But we want to make sure that we have the tenants and the culture that fits best for us that won't destroy it we'll take care of it they're more mature so that's why i like this strategy so lower entry fee is a lot better if you already have a house you probably already convert yours and then either a live in one if you kind of wanted to house hack your co-living or you know you can cash flow and go get your own place and have that paid for maybe even additional cash flow leftover so that is that one number two is you minimize your risk what do i mean by minimizing your risk well what i mean is we have eight bedrooms in our property that means that if one tenant moves out we don't have to worry about trying to get someone in so quickly to pay the mortgage and come out of our own pocket right so with that being said, we're in a position where if someone was to leave, we're okay. Once all rooms are filled, we're okay. If we had a long-term tenant and they left, we wouldn't be okay. We'd be on the hook for the mortgage and utilities that month. And so what happens is we minimize our risk of losing income along the way while capitalizing on the upside around making cash flow. We'll talk about cash flow here in a moment. However, 
What's great is the tenants that are living there, they share the responsibilities like sweeping, taking out the trash, it rotates, there's some house rules around that. Um, no partying, no couples, no drinking, you know, having parties or anything, no smoking. So all these things are in place so that we have a peaceful culture and we're not having people complain, we're not having neighbors complain, we wanna be respectful for our neighbors, but if someone's to leave, we're okay and we don't have to rush to put someone in we can actually take our time to find the right tenant and so as an owner it's kind of like almost airbnb you get multiple tenants but you're getting it cleaned all the time what's cool is too i didn't say this as a tenant but the owner has the responsibility of having a cleaner come in and clean the common areas about twice a month we also have you know people cutting the grass shoveling snow if that takes place so we have advantages that we cover as an owner all right number three is cash flow i said it earlier it's absolutely amazing when you can have your mortgage going down you can provide affordable housing for other people and a culture that's awesome everyone's on the same page and you get to make money from it right we invest in real estate to make money but what's great about co-living is you're actually providing a home for many people that would be paying a lot more like that 45 percent we were talking about for an apartment and then everything else on top of that so it's probably closer to 55 or more percent for those young professionals. So cash flow is great. Now people might sit there and say, why are you taking advantage of people? That's not cool. Well, look, why aren't people going out there and buying their own houses? You're saying that we're having, helping people pay less than a thousand dollars a month plus utilities is not a good thing when we should ask them to go and put down a hundred thousand dollars or more on a property and then live paycheck to paycheck, barely getting by to play for a house that they're at work for all the time. That doesn't sound right to me. So if someone's in a position where they can invest in a home, make it look nice, get it all set up where you have a great culture and make money on it, of course, this is a capitalistic society. Real estate is about capitalism. And so we do want to make money. Why am I gonna take all this risk and not make any money? That doesn't make sense. We've had people complain on some of our Facebook market posts when we're marketing our place, like, you know, all this and that, right? And it's like, everyone has their own opinion. Our intention's pure. We wanna provide great housing. We wanna make cash flow at the same time. If we're gonna take the risk, we want the reward. No one, even those complainers, would take on all this risk for zero reward. It makes no sense. So the cash flow is beautiful. And my buddy who teaches this, his name's Sam. If you're interested in learning how to do co-living, the best thing you can do is join his community um, for that and let me know because you'll get a, I believe you'll get a discount, let me know. But I learned from him, I do the mindset coaching for his community and just so you know, I'm not sharing anything he didn't share on our YouTube channel here. When I interviewed him, you can go see that. But he's making over $40,000 a month net. What that means passively, that means my $40,000 a month is coming in every single month and growing. How cool is that? And he's providing homes for so many people that would have been getting ripped out, ripped off out there in you know, the apartment scene and um, other areas like that. So it's really cool to see what he's created in his own life as an investor. So cash flow is beautiful and it helps in so many different ways when you're providing a home for people. All right, so those are the three advantages for, as a tenant and as an owner, and there are many, many more, I just want to highlight those big ones for you. But what I will say, if you're an investor on your path to financial freedom, could you imagine being able to supply an incredible home, but making two, three, four, sometimes $5,000 a month in cash flow, depending on the size of the property or more? The biggest thing I will tell you, there are things you got to look out for, challenges that come up. In all investing, there's challenges. There's a risk in all investing. So I just wanna make this disclaimer. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just giving you the advantages that I've seen as an owner and as a tenant because I've played on both sides of the fence. So I want you to know that, but co-living is in a unique strategy. It's absolutely powerful. And there are ways to test your market, to pick markets. And so if you guys wanna learn, let me know, reach out. Hope this video helps you guys. In fact, we're gonna be coming out with more videos around our co-living property. You can check out our journey from beginning to end on our YouTube channel here, Master Life by Design. And we're gonna share with you the growth of our co-living property. We already have one person moving in here in about 
six days we're super excited for. And so we wanna be able to share that plus all different strategies in, the, in real estate and business that you can have to create financial freedom because life isn't just about you. At some point in time, someone's gonna need your time or your money or even both. And are you in a position to do that? And that's what we're doing here at Master Life by Design. So make sure you subscribe, hit that thumbs up, comment, share this video, and we will see you on the next video. Thanks guys.